I've mentioned it before on my channel that um, during World War II, one of the biggest black market items was the beef cattle industry. Uh, beef, people couldn't get it. In fact, the term black market didn't even really exist until World War II because it became such a problem. Other things also were in demand, but beef was the one thing that drove the term black market into our common linguistics that we know today, the black market. Okay, so that being said, how did that take place? There have always been cattle rustling. Back in the days, they would these outlaws would come in and they would take entire herds because you couldn't monitor all your herds all the time. They would roam and you would check on them here and there. But the rustlers would come in, take out any sentries that were there, and then run that cattle out to a place where they could hide them until people stopped looking for them. And then they could take them many miles away to a black market. Um, and then during World War II, you had the ability to drive trucks up and snatch one or two cows and then drive off with them. And that's what they did. And during World War II, everybody had these stamp books that were ration cards and you could only buy so much meat. So it didn't matter if you were rich or you were poor, that's all the meat you could get. And so once you filled out your stamps on your ration card, you had to wait until the next time. And so, but there were still rich people who had money, plenty of money, and they were willing to pay whatever it took to get their beef, to get their meat fix. <laughs> and so that's what happened. There were black market suppliers, cattle rustlers, who would go out, snatch a few cows, butcher them, and then sell them uh, to people who could afford it or anyone who would pay um, at very high prices and on the down low, you know, in the back alleys. And that's how people got their meat. So that being said, that was during hard times. Everybody had to sacrifice. We had victory gardens during World War II because the more food you produce is the less food that has to come from the system in order to feed the population because all the soldiers overseas were getting as much food as possible. You have to feed armies. Armies are very hungry machines. And so what about again? What happens when times get tough and you can no longer buy meat uh, for whatever reason, shortages, price controls, which I've always said on this channel, are coming. That's something that is always in the playbook of communist and socialist governments when they see, see that, oh, it's unfair. We'll, we'll enact price controls. All that does is make the problem worse. When that happens, uh, there will be another black market for whatever thing that people want and that there's a shortage of. Animals. Many of the homesteaders who watch my channel have animals and they have gardens. How will you protect those things when it all goes downhill? This last week, um, we'll get to that in a second, but this last week I saw uh, an article that was put out on Fox News and a bunch of other media outlets where this kid went into Bass Pro and took a net from in Bass Pro, one of the, you know, they sell fishing nets there, right? <laughs> and then just went over to one of the aquariums and snatched out this big fish. They said it's a 50 pound tarpon. I don't, doesn't look like 50 pounds to me, more like 15 or 20. But anyway, they said it's a 50 pound tarpon and he just walks out the store with it. And the first time I heard that, I was like, are they really that desperate that people are going to get food, free food at Bass Pro? <laughs> I mean, because it is food. All these fish are there. And fish, people eat fish. But that's not the case. W once I watched the video, it was more likely that this kid was just playing a prank. He was probably dared to do it by his friends. Um, he has no absolute you know, fear of consequences. He's just walking in there and walking out with that fish with a big smile on his face like it's a giant joke. Um, again, another example of our moral compass com being completely shattered in this country. We have no idea what's right for right and wrong any anymore. And when people do stuff like that, a lot of people laugh and think it's a giant joke. But the reality is, yeah, when people get desperate, they will go into Bass Pro and they will steal fish. When they're hungry, they will go into Bass Pro and they will steal the fish. And Bass Pro is now going to have to enact measures to keep people from going in and stealing fish. <laughs> it, it's just crazy, but that's the that's the reality. So earlier last week, I did a video on on my Patreon page, and I think it was released on. I'm not sure if I put it on my main channel or not. I have to go back and look. But I did a talk about. I think it was um, talking about. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, yeah, I did put it on the main channel, his bunker that he's building in Hawaii. And I made the point in that video that he's got his food growing production right next to the roadside. 
<laughs> so apparently he's got this spot of land and I'll show you on the map. So this is Zuckerberg's land. It basically starts over here and goes all the way along this roadside right here and then goes back up this way here. And I think part of this is a public beach access and this is his private beach. And so he's building and constructing around in this area right here. Okay, right next to, because obviously if you're a billionaire, you want a nice view of the ocean. So you're going to build on the beach. And then his food production that we have found, <laughs> I mean, maybe this is not as an updated of a photo as it should be, but he's got his food production growing areas down here. And it's right next to the main roadside. This is the main roadside. Everyone talks about this wall that he's built along here. And it's not really that big of a wall. Uh, and so people can basically see over it if they want to. But it's right next to the roadside. I mean, this is one of the main roads going through there. And they can just jump over that and have at it. And not only that, but there's not a lot of viewing ability here because it's all protected in by this wood line. So if you're a security guard over on this side or a security guard over here, you really can't see what's going on in here unless this is patrolled. But even then, if the entire if the grid goes down and you're dealing with collapse scenarios... All the people on this island, I mean, there's no more shipments coming in. We all know the cost of living in Hawaii is huge and high because they're shipping in all this stuff from the lower 48. And if you're not getting food anymore, if you're not, or if you're, listen, you can grow pretty much year round in Hawaii, but if you're not getting some of the, if, if the supermarkets are not being stocked because of workers, you know, shortages and, and the, the currency has collapsed and people can't come to, you know, and the, the free pickings, people are going to. Search this out, and this will be gone. Stand, it's gone. And I'm not trying to just stoke fear in everybody here. I'm just talking about scenarios and what we've seen throughout history. When hard economic times come, people will do things that they would not normally do. You know, illegal things. You know, stealing and all that other stuff. So, what do you do? You as a homesteader, and, and I'm, I'm doing a number of consults and uh, have some more lined up for homesteaders who are looking for information or are looking for ways to best strategize how they lay out their homesteads and things like that or secure them. And one of the things I try to make people understand is that people during hard times are going to do crazy things. You must secure your livestock. You must secure your growing garden areas. If you don't, they will be robbed blind. I mean, again, the moral compass has already shattered in this country. We know right. We do not know right from wrong anymore. And people who do wrong have no fear of consequences. It was about a year ago. There was a number of people in my county who own sheep. And because I own sheep, I paid attention to the news story when the news story came out that they were randomly losing sheep and not just to stealing. People were just going by and shooting them. Some of them, sometimes they were missing and then showing up dead later in other places. But that, I was like, people are like, why would you do that? Well, when people have no moral compass and when people have no fear of consequences for their actions, that's what you get. And so you must be ready, willing and able to harden up your assets, to, be hard, to harden up all of your homestead, to deal with the insanity that will surely come. I'm not kidding you. If you have your garden by a roadside, you need to move it or think about moving it to a more strategic location. Um, if you have your animals that roam on a part of your property or are kept on a part of your property that cannot, you cannot see and you cannot monitor, you need to think about rearranging that strategically. What did people do back in the day? They would shepherd their animals. When I was in Macedonia, um, we were on the Serbian border uh, doing... Um, uh, uh, it's basically peacekeeping duties. We were based there with the UN. And um, we would sit at our observation post on the Serbian border. It was a 10, 11 man team, uh, 10 man infantry, one medic. And then we'd have the shepherds who would come down from the villages and the mountains and they would bring their flocks. All the shepherds were female, by the way, because men had other things to do, other work stuff. But the, the shepherds would bring their flocks down from the mountain and they would bring them into the valley. And then they, at the end of the day, would run them back up the mountain. And they, they, they went everywhere those animals went. And I was like, that's just weird. Why can't they just let them go? Maybe, you know, the, the, the sheep not know where home is. My sheep know where home is. My sheep can run around my property, no problem. And they know where to come back home because they get feed every day. So then one of our trucks broke down outside the wire one day. One of our trucks broke down 
outside the wire. And if you've ever been in the military and deployed to a third world country, can you guess what happened next? Because we left that truck out there. Ah, it'll be okay. <laughs> We'll go. We'll, we got a record coming. The schedule it might be here in a couple days, but we'll 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 take care of it. That thing was stripped bare. I mean, not bare. I mean, they still had tires on it. They didn't get that far, but we had to chase them off with rifles. I mean, they they would the, the, the people were coming out of the hills everywhere to strip whatever they could get off that truck. It was a, a deuce and a half that broke down. And man, they I mean, they were pulling out the batteries. They pulled out the copper wiring. They pulled. They stole headlights off that thing. <laughs> I mean, there was tires on it still, but if we had left it much longer, they would have got those too. I mean, it was insane. Now we know why shepherds came down with the flocks, because if they didn't, there's chances are those people, if they're willing to steal from anybody, and especially soldiers that are armed soldiers, just inside the wire from where they're at, who have night vision capabilities. I mean, we didn't notice it because we, didn't, we weren't even looking that direction because I, you know, we're looking towards the Serbs, you know, over the border over there. That's what we're paying our attention to. <laughs> but not the deuce and a half. Then one day, we, or that night, we're like, what's going on over there? I hear something. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, anyway, all that to say is there, are ne there needs to be things that keep people honest. And if you dangle out fruit right in front of a man who has no moral compass and is not afraid of the, action, the consequences of his actions... Bad things are going to happen. Rethink. Guys, 2024 is here and everything is insane. The world has gone absolutely crazy. You have to be a blind man, deaf and stupid to not understand that. What's it going to lead to now? Harden your assets. Harden up your homestead. Again, if you have your garden or your animals near a roadside and you can't monitor them effectively... You need to rethink your strategy. All right. Interesting stuff going on. Leave your thoughts below. What recommendations additionally do you think would be good here? Leave a comment below because it may be your comment and, you know, your thoughts that may help or even save someone's life down the road. I'm interested to hear what you say. Hey, check out our merchandise over at perfectpickler.com. We're still selling our fermentation kits, uh, homemade probiotics in the comfort of your own kitchen. Okay, you can get way more strains of bacteria by doing it yourself. PerfectPickler.com. The master kits are available and fantastic. They are fantastic at getting started with that process. Also, our patrons, we're still giving away a ton of these PDF books. These amazing books that do not tell you how to make tinctures because that's all over the internet. It tells you why you make certain tinctures and the benefits for them. So check out these. If you buy these online, like one is $900 and the other one's like $800 some dollars. Get these. All you got to do is join to be a patron for as little as a dollar a month. And I will give you a link that you can download these PDFs and then take them somewhere to get them printed. Make sure you have hard copies of these things. This is the kind of stuff that the people out there do not want you to know. Okay. This stuff is out of copyright. This guy, this author, he lived back in the 1800s. It's out of print, out of copyright. And the reason they're so valuable online is because of the information contained within. Do not let this opportunity pass you by. If you have not downloaded these yet, and you can't find the links on the internet, in fact, you can go to my website, inamericanhomestead.com, and see that patrons link up there. And once you join Patreon, all you do is go to my website, click on the link in, on that page with these downloads, and it'll take you right to it. And you can download them. I want you to have this information. This is great information. I can't be more specific than that because this is YouTube censorship bill. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic times we're living in. What's next? We'll see. Hey guys, see you next time in the homestead. Bye. This is Grandma. Grandma survived the Great Depression. She survived the Great Depression because her supply chain was local and she knew how to do stuff. Grandma was smart. Grandma told us to make do with what you got. She also said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Homesteading is all about self-reliance and declaring ourselves to be independent from the system. We grow our own food, we raise our own animals, and doing these things help safeguard our families from the unpredictable world that surrounds us. But what about banking? I love being my own power company, but what about being my own bank? Right now, our country is over $30 trillion in debt and rising. The Fed keeps printing money and the Congress won't stop spending money. Staying attached to the modern banking system and their investment vehicles is like putting all of your eggs in one very, very fragile basket. On one side, you have the threat of inflation and your savings value floating away. 
And the other side is a possible deflationary stock market collapse just like what happened in the 1930s. Genesis Gold Group is like a basket holding eggs and these eggs are impossible to break. History shows us that all paper investments have and will return to their intrinsic value eventually. Zero. But gold, silver, and other precious metals have never, ever been worthless. In every collapse throughout history, people have turned back to precious metals to find monetary value. If you have a 401k, an IRA, or a savings account where you're literally watching the purchasing power inflate away, give Genesis Gold Group a call right now. Today. This instant. They can develop a strategy for you and the days ahead. I can tell you how I raise sheep, I can tell you how I raise chickens, or the best way to grow tomatoes, or how to hook up a solar panel. But Genesis Gold Group is your best shot at safeguarding your hard-earned savings and investments during this increasingly turbulent time in history. The link and phone number is in the description below, or visit their website at genesisgoldgroup.com. And be sure to say you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>